Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel where today's video is all about this, the Brighton Guardia rear tail light radar device. Now an AMP Plus radar slash AMP Plus light is something you place on the rear of your bike and when it detects something approaching, it will flash the light and give alert warnings to your connected bike computer and or with their connected mobile app. The Brighton Guardia was first seen at Eurobike 2022 with a limited release in the Italian market in November or December of that year. Now fast forward about three months after that, and on March 23 we saw the release of this, the R300L. The L standing for long because the specs on this state that it has up to 190 metre detection range. Typical radar units are between 140 to 150 metre detection range. Now those claims of up to 190 metres are the hero feature of this device, and well, more on that later in the video. So my history with the Guardia is quite extensive and I have three of the units. So I have the Italian version and I have two versions of the R300L. The Italian version I purchased retail. I have a retail version of the R300L that was released to the market and I have another one that was handed to me on release day over at Taipei Cycle from Brighton themselves. Now my early experience with these units was, well, let's just say not ideal. And my experience was reflected in most of the release day reviews we saw of these in March of this year. Some of the problems that I encountered early on with these units were multiple false positives to the point where I actually had to switch them off and also very laggy or delayed clearance events where a car would go past, the dot would still be on screen, the car would then be up the road and the dot would still be on the screen for a few seconds. Making me very confused that there was nothing behind but something was on the head unit saying there was. So with me encountering so many issues with these, I put them all on the shelf and waited for Brighton to cook the firmware a little bit longer. And after a few months, I am pleased to discover that firmware version 0.4.13 puts these units into an acceptable use state. Now coming up in this video, I have an unboxing of an R300, which is exactly the same as the R300L. I'll go through the setup, configuration and mobile app for these devices. And I've got some extensive on-road testing of one of these units up against the Garmin Varia RTL515. I'll put video chapters in this description below so you can jump ahead to any of the section in the video. And with that, let's get into it. Now to the hands-on and unboxing of the Guardia R300. And I've got to say, this box has arrived in the best condition I have ever had a box arrive in the Llama Lab. Not a single dent. So all for cycling, kudos for your packaging. Uh, the box itself looks pretty nice with all the tech specs that we've gone through on the back. But let's get this thing unboxed for the first time. When in doubt, kitchen knives come out. Oh, it's going to end in tears, I'm sure. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so we have some important product safety information from Brighton. We have a quick start guide. We have, well, I've actually unboxed it backwards, but uh, that's okay. USB-C cable, fantastic. We have the mount, which appears to be an all-for-one kind of mount, aero groove down the center there, round and possibly D. We'll look closer at that in a moment. Oh, we have another aero mount here for super aero, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> and, da, 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 oh, okay, well, it was going to be an unveiling, but it didn't kind of work like that. All right, it's actually quite light. So here's the unit, the Brighton Guardia R300. USB-C. It has the standard kind of, well, it looks like a Garmin. Uh, mount compatibility with the dog's ears there, but it's got the top and bottom shaved off. All right, that's the unit, and as I said, it does feel quite light, so let's put it up against the L508. I think this is, yes, L508, all code names for these, and the RTL515, so the Garmin, the Machine, and the Brighton, which is the one we're looking at today. So, all looking very, very similar. How do they stack up on the weight scales? Have a look at that. Guardia R300 weighing in at 69 grams. As a comparison, the machine 
L508, 63, and the Garmin weighing in at 71. I'm not going to bother with the RCT 715, that's a bigger unit with a camera which has a different set of functions. So here is the Brighton unit with the button on top. That was a problem with the original Garmin's, uh, the RCTs with the button on top, that would get full of junk and become hard to press after a while. Uh, the machine has a button on the front there. The newer units or the RCT 715, etc., have the buttons on the side. So keen to see how durable that is once it gets full of gunk. We'll turn this one on. There we go, we've got some flashies. I shouldn't really shine that straight into the camera, but it's kind of bright, so it all looks pretty good. Now the mounting style is, well, it's the same as the machine. So it's 90 degrees to the Garmin one. So the Garmin Vario radar mounts aren't going to work with this unit because the dog's ears are on the wrong spot. It will work, I'm guessing, with the machine style mounts. The way we can test that is put the machine in here. Oh, that's tight. That works, and that is, okay. So R300 is going to be able to use the same mounts as the machine, not as the Garmin unless you can flip it over. On to a few things to know about the Guardia, starting off with the Ant Plus radar and Ant Plus light compatibility, meaning that this unit will work with any compatible head unit that supports those standards, from Garmin to Wahoo to Hammerhead. There are six light modes this can operate in, well, effectively five, with an off mode where the radar is active. There is an auto sleep mode after five minutes of inactivity, using the accelerometers on board to detect whether the unit is moving or not. There is a brake light function, which is optional, where it will detect decelerations of the bike and make the light a little brighter. There is an auto light mode switch when using Brighton head units, which will determine the time of day and adjust the light mode accordingly. The Guardia mobile companion app operates very much like the Varia companion app where you can get additional alerts via your phone or via your headphones if you're wearing those. This unit is compatible with the My Bike Radar data field over on Connect IQ. So if you have a compatible Garmin unit and you want to count the cars passing or vehicles passing and the speeds they're approaching, this unit will do that. Battery life listed as eight hours on full solid. My bench testing shows that I'm getting nine hours, 48 minutes in full slash high solid mode. So I'd be pretty confident with the stats they have here. And finally, the pricing. This comes in at US 129.95. On to my creative solution of the day to compare brightness between radars. And I've put them on the bench here on full solid and put a bit of card over top. So the Varia on the left, the Guardia on the right there, are almost equivalent brightness with the Varia being a little larger. But the Guardia is definitely bleeding a lot more light around the edges. So when it comes to brightness, I'd say pretty much on par with the Varia and definitely brighter than the Magine L508. Okay, now onto the most important part of this video. How does this radar operate out of the road when put head to head with the Varia? So there's a lot going on here on the screen. We have the front, we have the rear, we have the Guardia over there on the left on the 1040. We have the RTL 515 on the right on the 840. First detection there goes to the Varia. Now there are one second recording intervals, so give or take one second here or there. But what we can see here is the first detection, the absolute speed with the My Bike Radar Traffic uh, data field is looking good. Same detection speed. Okay, second car was detected a little bit quicker there with the Varia. But again, it has come up on the Guardia. First car clears. Second car inbound. Clears on the Varia and within a second or two clears on the Guardia. So successful first test there, second car inbound, detected a little sooner with the Varia, but still not too bad on the Guardia, it's only a second or two off. But the most important thing here is it hasn't missed anything. Car is inbound, a slight bend in the road, both units still picking that up. Speed looks good right there. All clear event and another car coming. And they've both picked that up before I turned off the road. So quite a successful scenario there. Alrighty, on to the next one. 
Yeah, and yes, there are quite a few of these, so please feel free to jump ahead in the chapters. But I think it's important to show exactly how this works under a number of different setup scenarios, road conditions. So we have some straight line here. We have van turning onto the road. Now this environment has what can be challenging to radars, and that is steel fences, steel buildings, a lot of reflections to the radar signal. But again, those false positives showing up, which is a good sign. So both of these are detected. Okay, dot inbound on both. Speed, both the same. Second car coming behind that. The Uvaria has picked it up first. Now they're both displaying two dots. So again, as expected, one for one. And here's where things get tricky. One car turns off, one car continues on at about the same speed I'm riding at. So the Varia all clears and then comes back. And that car then turns off. And they will both all clear. Okay, it's as expected. And new detection. Again, both within a few seconds. Light there flashing on the crossing sign, so the lights are bright on these. And the Varia just beating out the Guardia there for the dual detection, but again, never missing a car coming past. And next car clearing now. Alrighty. Scenario number two. Still pretty good in my books. Now let's go for a long bomb. Here's a truck inbound on a bend. Now one thing of note is that detections beyond 150 metres will not cause the dot to climb or drive up the screen. You'll see it happen here with the detection at around 184 metres. The dot stays stationary on the screen, 184, until it gets to around 150 metres and then it starts moving up the screen. I'm guessing this is a Garmin legacy thing. That's because their units only do between 140 and 150. Now, one thing to notice is the Guardia there detected the truck as two dots on the screen for the larger vehicle. So there's a truck with a big container on the back. And the Guardia thought that was two vehicles, which was a common theme you'll see. But regardless, it still picked it up. One for one with both of those, and I was alerted of the pass. Next up, another long range. Heading north this time. Car coming into view, and they both pick up at about the same time. The beeps are both the same. The screen lag is just possibly the units being a little laggy because I'm screen recording. But I'd call that one for one. Both picked up that car, no worries. All clear within a second of each other. So perfect scenario there. Good distance, but definitely not 190 meters from the Guardia. Okay, I've lost count of where we are, but the next test, we have a caravan inbound. This is where things get very interesting. So the Guardia's picked that up and picked it up as two vehicles. You can see two or three dots there with the caravan, it's getting a little confused. It still knows it's a vehicle there, I'm still alerted. But it thinks there's two vehicles. Well, technically, I guess there is. Okay, all clear event on those. And the Guardia has continued on with the alert state with the truck inbound. Again, detecting two vehicles for the truck with the cabin and the rear of the truck. Okay, all clear state from both of those. Coming back over the freeway, same one we crossed before with the warnings, and another car inbound. First one to pick up on this was the Guardia, just. And a slower pass this time, both recording 39 k's an hour, 40, 50, 39, bounces around a little bit there from both, and all clear. All right, now things get a bit trickier. So we have a car coming out of a roundabout in town. It's 
the suspension is absolutely shot on that car, leaning to the left a little bit. <laughs> All righty. Now, an all clear has taken place on that one, but the Guardian still hung on because it knew something was coming up from behind. So something's happened there. But it held onto one of those dots, which will disappear in a moment. And now we're back on par with each other. Okay, multiple car detection here. The Guardian is just lagging a little bit. But still never really incorrect. It's never saying that there's no car when there is a car there. Okay, another pass there. And again, we're splitting hairs. Okay, that car has met my speed and we'll be very close to getting it all clear soon. Okay, pausing the video just here to explain what's about to happen or what did happen yesterday. The Guardia has determined that I'm moving at the same speed as this car and has given an all clear event. It's no longer a threat. Now, as the car creeps up to me, I'll hit the video pause again here. Now it detects it again as a threat, but it's kind of too late. Whereas the Varia held on to that detection and then all cleared that car and then detected the next one coming through. So this is pretty much the only, what I would call hiccup that I encountered with the Guardia unit, but I only noticed in post analysis actually when looking at this video. On the road, didn't notice. I knew there was a car there. Within a few seconds of any detection, I'll always be uh, alert. All right, so continuing on the ride and a multi-car detection here, I can see two. The Guardia initially reports three, goes back to two. Now the Varia correctly reports three. And funnily enough, another car with a canopy or a cabin on the back is detected just for a few seconds as two dots. Okay, passing now, all clear on that and a delayed all clear on the Guardia. And the final scenario today, this is probably the trickiest of the lot. We have multiple cars, multiple speeds, bends in the road, and both units picking up the four wheel drive car that's coming up behind us now. Speed approaching is matching on both. Now there's multiple cars and trees and buildings and you name it. Okay around the bend. They're both switched back to single vehicle detection. Now on to dual vehicle detection. And there'll be another bend coming up. But the one thing to take note of here is they do detect the closest vehicle. So there's no false negatives which is at the end of the day, all you really need to worry about. Is there a car there? Yes, no. Is there another one? Yep. And all clear on that. Slight delay on the all clear from the Guardia. Okay. Simultaneous detection of the next two cars coming. Approach speeds. Look about the same once they stabilize. Okay, the second car pulls off. That car all clears. What the hell are the radars going to do? They're struggling, both of them. Okay, they've detected the car <laughs> in the distance. Very interesting scenario, this one. Not a straight pass, anyway. Okay, all clear from that. The Guardia's hung on to, no, it's all cleared. No, it's now detected that car again. And Back to the most important part, when the car passes, there's a dot. There we go for that one. And the last pass. And we are done. They slightly delayed all clear from the Guardia. But one for one out in the road in those scenarios, these two units aren't too far off each other. So my takeout from the rides you've just seen and a number of rides prior is this unit never failed to detect a car coming inbound with what I would call a clear detection scenario. Yes, there was that one instance through the roundabout where we met the car's speed and it called it all clear when technically it wasn't and only detected right at the last minute, but that's as it was.
If you're relying on those dots specifically for your safety, you're kind of doing it wrong. But making no excuse, the Varia did hold up a little better in that scenario. Look, multiple detections with this unit aren't as good as the Varia, as you saw on screen, and it was more likely to double up the dots on trucks and caravans and articulated vehicles. The detections beyond 150 meters didn't cause that dot to move, but I'm guessing that's a legacy thing from Garmin, as mentioned in the video before. Something interesting to note though. And all clear can still be laggy at times. Now, although the R300L, L standing for long, does claim a detection range of up to 190 meters, it was very, very rare that I saw anything over 160 or 170 meters. So the hero feature really wasn't a standout, to be honest. Having said that, there was a few instances where it did detect a little quicker than the Varia. Okay, so onto my summary of the Brighton Guardia R300L and rewinding back to release day in March, this thing was definitely not ready to be released on the market. And that was reflected in the release day reviews that we saw too. I really thought Brighton should have put a pause on this for a month or two and gotten it to a state where it is now with the firmware before unleashing this on the world. The experience that I've had recently with the firmware is completely different than what I had on release day and prior. And it's now a radar that I'd happily put on the back of the bike and have been doing on gravel, mountain and road for the last few weeks. But the question is, is it worth saving a few dollars to go with this versus the Varias, which are a very, very trusted unit on the market? And that is entirely up to you. All right, and with that, thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed this one. Hit subscribe to be across more videos on this channel and we shall see you soon.